your monthly opportunity to speak directly to the Mayor of London, although obviously I also avail myself of the opportunity to ask him a couple of questions as well. And we find ourselves this morning, Sadiq Khan, in not for the first time, but possibly in the most febrile of circumstances, um, talking about you being in the news for reasons that have next to nothing to do with you. Uh, what, what, what did you feel, if you don't mind me asking that question, when you heard what Lee Anderson said about you being essentially enthralled to Islamists and extremists? Well, uh, good morning. I've had a number of emotions over the last um, six days. Uh, Sad, angry, frustrated, appalled, um, heartbroken. Uh, A lot of different emotions. It's not about me. Well, it is a bit. I I, 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 I take your point, but I do want to talk about you for a bit first, because that... that, that, those are words I haven't heard you use before. Well, what made this occasion different? Because I sit here every month and read absolute filth coming into this studio about you and uh, directed at you. And I know that you experience similar in, in public spaces, which I've also experienced. What, what, why is this one so different for you? Well, a number of reasons. Look, firstly, park for a second. Uh, this man is a very senior conservative. What's happened subsequently is people who I think should know better, not call it what it is. Now, look, if somebody says this is wrong or uh, they should apologize, I would assume it's wrong, uh, unacceptable, and apologies being asked for is because we all accept it's racist, Islamophobic, uh, and anti Muslim. Uh, m- my sadness and my heartbreak is because people who we look to for leadership haven't provided it. And I mean Sunak, I mean the Deputy Prime Minister, I mean the Cabinet. James, I was one of the first people in real time on your show uh, and at other places to call out anti-Semitism within my party. Uh, I've been quite clear in my views on homophobia and misogyny. Later on today, there'll be a report published which will demonstrate some of the cultural problems within our police service. Why is anti-Muslim hatred, why is Islamophobia any less serious than those things. Uh, And my sadness and my heartbreak is because I thought we'd made progress since 2016. Uh, And and clearly, in some quarters, we haven't. And here's my real source of sadness, is I spent a lot of time over the last uh, many years in politics encouraging others to get involved in mainstream politics. Look, you know, don't don't get mad, get even. Join a political party. Go on a lawful, peaceful, safe protest. Lobby your MP, become a councillor, become a member of parliament. James, the conversations I've had over the last week from mums, dads, uncles, aunties of Muslim children or visible minorities saying, you know what, there's no way I'm going to encourage my loved one to get into politics. There is no way at all if that's how people like you are treated. And by the way, you and I often have conversations off air that many of your listeners would not know about about you calling me out for saying, why don't you talk about it more, Sadiq? Mm. You're in danger of gaslighting. The, I'm paraphrasing what you've said in the yeah, past to me. Of it, and, and apologies for breaching confidences. Sadiq, you're in danger of gaslighting the British public into thinking everything's okay when it clearly isn't. Because I don't want to be the main character, right? I don't want to play the victim card, the race card, the Muslim card. But James, Sunak's had a million opportunities to call this out for what it is. Oliver Dowden's had a million opportunities. Every member of the cabinet has had many opportunities. They've not called it out for what it is. This is Islamophobic. It is racist. It is anti-Muslim. Can I explain why for those of you listeners that don't know? Of course. Right. There, are these, there are these common conspiracy theories. There are these uh, 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 Islamophobic slurs. There are tropes. There are lazy untruths about all sorts of minorities. We know the ones about Jewish people. We know the ones about uh, women. We know the ones about those from the LGBTQ plus community. The ones about Muslims are basically uh, Muslims taking over London, the Islamification of uh, society. The phrase Londonistan is a reflection of those conspiracy uh, theories, sleeper cells. Well, what this man did was basically articulate in a few sentences all those tropes. It's clearly Islamophobic. It's clearly anti-Muslim. It's clearly racist. And who, here why I'm angry. What the Tories have done is try and deflect this by an argument about definition of Islamophobia. That's exactly what the Labour Party did about the definition of anti-Semitism in 2016, right? I accepted straight away the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism. Why are the Conservatives accepting the United Nations, the old party parliamentary group definition of 
Islamophobia. So look, I'm happy to call it anti-Muslim hatred if it gets onto mm. the terrain of what's at the root of this, which is, you know, uh, a big problem in the UK, a big problem across the uh, globe, and we should be bringing communities together, uniting communities rather than dividing them. What do you think explains the reluctance? Because uh, to, to many people listening to this, they will remember Labour MPs, very senior Labour MPs being outspoken about anti-Semitism in their own ranks and, and being happy to name the people that they felt were responsible. Why, why do you think somebody as intelligent as Rishi Sunak and as well versed in the challenges of, of um, diversity and persecution and racism, why, why do you think he and all of his colleagues have failed so signally to call it out for what it so clearly is? Well, firstly, I think it starts from the top. The top's got to provide leadership, and but Sunak is weak. It, He's weak. The... Sunak's weak. Look, but what, you know, what's he frightened of? Well, because 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 of the double standards. If if Sunak did the right thing and called out this man for what he said and what it is, then it begs the question: What about Braverman? Begs the question: What about other members of the Conservative uh, Party? And and you know he's a weak leader. And I'm afraid for the next few weeks and months we'll have more of this. And here's the problem: the consequences of that is it normalises hatred against Muslims. Is, is it as simple as that? If they if they were to put a name on what Lee Anderson has done, it would apply equally to Suella Braverman and well, others. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's for uh, look. look. Well, let me read you what she said. The truth is that the Islamists, the extremists and the anti-Semites are in charge now. They have bullied the Labour Party. They have bullied our institutions and now they have bullied our country yeah. into submission. Is that I, I, I don't want to play top trumps on such a serious issue. But but to you, is, is that worse than what Lee Anderson well, said? According to Anderson, yes, because here's the here's the if you if you uh, and uh, you don't need to do this, but I'll explain to you what happened. But if you watch the actual interview that this man gave, he was saying, actually, Braverman went too far mm. because it's not this, I'm paraphrasing, the Islamists aren't controlling the country, but they are London. Mm. Now, would he have said that if my faith was other than Islam? Would he have said that if my skin was other than the color that my skin is? And here's the issue. Now, there's all sorts of deflection. And by the way, James, every month I come and I can have a discussion debate about policing, about yeah. the NHS, about housing, about the ULES, about air quality. That's a discussion of my policies, right? Not the colour of my skin or my religion, uh, but also where's the evidence? Uh, and here's the thing uh, uh, why I'm heartbroken and sad. It's a 2024, man. We're not talking about the 1970s when my dad came in the 1960s where there were signs saying no black, no Irish, no dogs. By blacks, they meant anybody of colour. This is 2024. And this man wasn't the deputy chairman 15 years ago. He was the last deputy chairman. Swala Brothman wasn't the home secretary 30 years ago. She was the last Home Secretary. Liz Truss wasn't the Prime Minister 30 years ago. She was the last Prime Minister. I'm sorry. I expected better from Sunak. If, if this had happened a year ago, would you be... Would you have thought about running again? Well, look, here's I've the thing. I've not seen you like this No, before. here's the thing. You cannot allow bullies to win, man. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to allow myself to be bullied out of politics, right? There, there are people who uh, have them afraid been scared to get into politics because of this sort of stuff in 2016, right? If we allow them to win, what does that mean? Right, that means you can't be a politician, you can't be in the cabinet, you can't be the mayor if you're of Islamic faith. And it's, you know, we rightly call out anti-Semitism. Rightly, it's, it's the oldest form of hatred we know. Well, newsflash, anti-Muslim hatred, Islamophobia, racism is acceptable in many walks of British life.